Hello, this is Dr. Susan Nash, and I'm here to talk a little bit today about developing a strategic plan during difficult and uncertain times, times of shock change. So, let's ass assume that you have a new assignment. You're a consultant, and you've been asked if you will take on this assignment, and your first reaction was like, yikes, no! <laughs> But when you look at it further, you realize you're needed, and so you're going to tackle it. So you've been called to a meeting with your client. The client is a company in the energy industry, and you've been asked to develop a strategic plan for the next 18 months to weather the uncertainties and challenges arising from the coronavirus and heightened instability, global tensions, um, bizarre volatility with with the stock market, with energy prices, with um, rumors of, and more rumors, scary times. Your company wants to weather the storm financially and also be in a situation to grow. Not an easy task, but it's possible. They want to identify opportunities as well as weaknesses and threats. They want to evaluate three different scenarios and possibilities. They range from, we've got this, to coronavirus has sickened 30% of my workforce and the rest are holed up at home, and there's no supply chain. So first of all, you need to start by identifying the company, the mission, and the vision. So first say, what is your client's company? Describe it in a brief paragraph. The core business, where it operates, its relative size in relation to other and the same industry and, and other companies in the, re the region, the area in general, and its relative financial health. So, for example, if you have a private equity-based energy company, your relative financial health may be not very good. You might be highly leveraged. You might be a company that survived a few price shocks by means of a lot of debt, and then your price, your costs continued to soar. You couldn't really get a handle on it. So basically, you've been borrowing to pay interest on your debt. Technically, you're a zombie company. Is there any hope for you? And you may not want to be have that as your client, but let's just say <laughs> that was the client that chose you. <laughs> So first of all, let's t then let's look at the client's mission statement. What does a client really want to achieve? What is the mission? And the vision statement, where do they want to be in the future? What are they doing to make the world a better place? So let's start with an environmental scan. When we say environmental scan, do we mean cleaning, picking up trash in the parking lot? Um, no. Do we mean scanning to see if we've tidied up our workspace? No. When we say environment, we mean the business environment, the legislative, regulatory environment, the financial environment. So then, first, let's look at the business environment in normal times. Just quickly jot down what's the regular, normal demographics of your client's business. What are the overall market conditions? What are the overall economic trends over the last three years, GDP growth, employment, regulatory environment of certain regulations affected your client's business. What are the kinds of taxes and tax incentives that your client could take advantage of? And we're talking about normal times. So let's say that you have wind energy. Does your, are there tax incentives for wind, wind energy? Who are your client's competitors? So let's say, um, are they, in a normal time, are they other other business clients? And then let's also say, what are the recent trends in technology? So in normal times, are you going to digitization? Are you doing more things in the cloud? And just, you know, what was your normal situation? And then we have a change. So what are your situ what is the situation in abnormal times? So think about that too, environmental scan. 
in abnormal, terrible times. Now, let's look at what does your client want to do? What do they want to be doing in 18 months, 3 years, 5 years? And keep in mind, those these all tie to the mission. So, let's just go ahead and put this here. Um, mission-driven activities and goal setting. So what are your business activity targets, financial targets, talent targets? What kind of people do you want to be hiring? Do you want more um, skilled labor? Do you want more people who can do things like um, analytics, facilities targets, contingency plan targets, supply chain targets? Now let's look at resource analysis in shock change times. What should your client do in these times? In a resource analysis, we are going to take a look at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In other words, a SWOT analysis. Human resources, financial resources, facility, infrastructure, logistics, products and services, equipment, supply chain. Um, in a normal times, what are, what are, are they? And then let's think about shock change times. And let's say, what are the key assumptions that we're going to have in shock change times? Let's have three different scenarios. And this, and then these key assumptions, best case, quick recovery, energy prices balance back, businesses and manufacturing start working again. It's all good. So let's go ahead and make this a happy light green. <laughs> Scenario two, middle of the road case. Recession for 12 months, high unemployment, low prices. Let's make this a more dramatic green. Okay. Middle of the road case, recession for 12 months, high unemployment, low pr oil prices, say some inflation probably because of supply chain. Inflation, limping, supply chain, um, low oil prices, high commodity uh, cost for, for key services. So and then, worst case scenario, coronavirus reinfection, let's say cascading reinfections. So gross. Wave after wave of mass death. And if you're writing this and you're involved in this at this point, you, chances are you may be one of the victims. 20% of the population dies. Some locations worse than others. Essentially a zombie apocalypse. Who survived? Who is the last man standing. And for this you research, um, I would recommend just checking out some horror movies. <laughs> I know I'm sounding kind of grotesque and, and ghoulish humor. Well, maybe it's not humor. But, you know, if you don't let your mind plan for every possibility, you just won't be able to even respond to it when the time comes. Okay, so implementation of your plan and shock change times. So where do you dedicate resources? What are your income projections? What are your short-term diversification strategy policies? How do you want to diversify supply chain, resources? So what kind of things are you diversifying? Your supply chain? your talent, your services and reven revenue possibilities. So if we look at, for example, the plague of Black Death in London in 1665, 1666, 
not surprising 666 isn't that weird anyway um people were very aware of that that was also a day a year where there was a, a sighting of Halley's comet which was considered to be very very um negative harbinger of doom which it was so anyway in 1666 um, most of the people who were wealthy left town, so they, they waited it out in the countryside, just as the people did in Boccaccio's Decameron. And then, what did they do for, um, for amusement? They told each other stories. But what did they do amu for amusement back in the, um, <laughs> in the city? Well, they, sealed up and barred the door on people who were sick, put a big X, red X, on the, the door, and nobody could go there or, or touch, touch them or be, have contact. And then, eventually, if somebody survived, not sure that anybody really did, maybe they did, once they got sick, but if they survived, the, the cross went from red to white, or if they died and went in and decontaminated the place. But where were the business opportunities? Well, there were lots of um, opportunities for taking care of the sick. It was high, kind of high risk. Lots of opportunities for being a, a grave digger. Again, high risk. Um, a lot of stigma. So anybody who was willing to deal with stigma sometimes got paid. Um, I think there were also, there was also, um, um, quite the market for remedies of some sort, ideas of things that worked. We've all seen the beak mask that supposedly worked to uh, filter out the miasma, the, the diseased air. It had to go through um, a little bag of herbs. And they strapped on this big mask that looked like a beak. In the beak, they packed the beak with herbs, and yeah, gross, but um, in ineffectual. But they thought it was a worth wor work. So, well, maybe it did. Who knows? But if this was really about not about bad air, but about bad fleas um, and bad rats, that was um, not a possibility. Ironically, one of the bigger jobs that was available early on was being a dog killer dog exterminator and cat killer, because they were considered um, filthy. They thought that the, the, the disease was on the fur, so they, they gave bounties. What they inadvertently did was eliminated the food chain, and so the predators of the rats were liberated, and the rat population exploded exponentially. And so the rats exploded, and so did the fleas, and so did the plague. Do you, and it, I don't know if you remember what really happened in the in the in 1666. Why did the fi why did this um, plague go away finally? If you remember, there was a great fire of 1666, and it fried up all the rats and their fleas. So that was what worked. Anyway, so. Um, you would also be able to provide different services for rebuilding, etc. So you may think, you know, what, evaluate your client's core business and say, is there anything you can um, do to adapt it or adopt, adapt to new situations and, um, well, new situations, new opportunities, new realities. So we'll just say, um, with the new realities. Okay, so also we want to deal with the human factor. Are there any changes in work arrangements? What will they need to do to be able to work remotely? Are there any temporary workers planned if there are outages or extended sick leaves? Important to keep that in mind. Now here's where you actually build your plan and put it in a, a um, form where you can establish milestones and 
track whether or not you are on target to achieve your your strategies. So first of all, create a timeline for your short-term strategic plan. Create an Excel spreadsheet. Use critical path format. Um, list your timelines. Place them in the correct chronological order. Your timelines will be built around milestones. So you want to list your milestones first. So milestones and estimated timelines. Then under each milestone put many milestones. What do you have to do to accomplish each milestone? And then have some panic contingencies. What if you have a negative shock, something shock that's really negative that happens, or a positive sudden or shock action. So this is your final step, and after you've developed your timeline, um, then share your timeline with with the team and start, uh, after you do that, you will start assigning responsibilities. So start assigning responsibilities for each action step milestone and have a backup person for each. Assuming that we're still in times of sickness and you'll need a contingency plan. Or so in order to have depth in your talent. And as you do that, as you start thinking of the talent and the depth, you might think about how much you would um, accommodate, what, what would you would do to accommodate different things, um, such as new technologies, new services, new um, directions for your revenue. So this is a good start, and in the plan, then you would want, after you put your timeline and complete it, then you'll develop your narrative that would go with the timeline and just explain in narrative form what what your mission um, statement is, your timeline, um, your plan. So this is a timeline of the plan. And then at the very fine, final thing, create an, accompan an accompanying poor performance anxiety, typing while being, while recording, create an accompanying narrative that describes briefly at first each timeline or milestone and mini milestone. Okay, so hope this has been helpful, that you've enjoyed this, and contact me if you'd like any que questions answered or any clarifications, and I've enjoyed sharing this with you. Thank you. Again, this is Susan Smith-Nash, and this is a strategic plan, strategic planning for shock times.